I've been really uh, very lucky because I've been able to go all around the world looking at sacred sites. But of course, every time I come back to Cornwall, I'm absolutely delighted and, and, and so happy to be back here because it's, it has a magic all of its own and it has its, sacred, its own sacred sites. But one of the, one of the most powerful and the one, the one that affected me profoundly was the one in Castle Hill in, in South Island in New Zealand. It's a huge site and, and right in the middle of it there is a marae which is, is uh, related to the sacred Punamu stone where they used to collect the Punamu and, and uh, the women looked after this particular marae and it, that usually had a, a, a water filled basin in it. By the time we got there it had a dry season, it's all dried up and it was a sort of sandy base, a dusty base with, with rocks on it. And I started for, uh, dozing for the power centre and it had an extra five big energy lines which come in from different directions. I mean, there were, there were bands of that sort of relative size and they were meeting here at that point. Now normally, when you have something like that, you have some sort of manifestation at the point which is an addition to the spiral and all the radials. And I went very confidently towards this thing because I thought here we have one of the major sacred sites in New Zealand, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I tried and I tried with, with every level of dowsing that I've got to try and find this thing because I felt that I was being the one who was inadequate and I wasn't being able to pick up the subtleties of what was happening in this site. And I was really seriously disappointed because I, I had a feeling that this place would be of some absolutely paramount importance in the work I've been doing. So in, in absolute despair, I just marked the place with a little stone. I felt totally inadequate, but I, I, I marked it because I, I still had the feeling that there was going to be, that there was something that was going to happen. It's an important place. Amazing feeling of the whole massive great stones around and, and the magic of, of uh, ancient people and, and just a feeling, big feeling. And then I had to walk away. I went back to this site the next day because I, I knew there was, and I was actually with a group of people. And the group included a, an amazing Maori girl who'd said very, very little at all, but she'd been with this party and they were visiting sacred sites um, all around New Zealand. And this, they happened to be visiting on this particular day. And I was sitting down at the, the, the edge of the, the site there and she was sitting a bit further along, she didn't say anything at all. And she suddenly got up and she had a backpack and out of her backpack she took this enormous great uh, Punamu stone. This is, this is Punamu, the green stone, the, the peace stone. It's a magical, it's a, it's a jade type thing. It was much, much bigger than that, the one she had. And she, she suddenly started to walk in and of course the, and I, I there was no marking on, on where, and my stone was one of a thousand stones in the middle of this place. I suddenly was aware of it, uh, getting this Punamu stone out, and walking very carefully into the centre of this marae. And she, and she hadn't been there, nobody had seen me dowsing. And she kicked the stone away, with great ceremony, laid the stone down on that point, and then stood back, and she raised her head and there was almost a complete metamorphosis. She was, she was sort of hunched-shouldered and, and suddenly became almost balletic and started singing to the earth. And then she looked up and, and she beckoned because Bar and, and two or three other girls were there and they all sang again to the, to the, to the earth. And it was a it was a, a delightfully peaceful ceremony, and I had to go off uh, looking for a well somewhere else. And Bart told me about the the detail of the end of the ceremony later in the evening. And I said I must go back and see you know, if anything has, has has happened to this place after this Maori girl had done the ceremony. So the following morning. Uh, I went up and where I had had no indication of a manifestation whatsoever the day before, or two days before, there was suddenly the most beautiful thing in the middle of it, which had formed itself, right on that point. This thing did not exist the day before. This thing was a direct result of Donna, Maori, close to the earth, singing, consciously communicating with the power center in the earth. 
and it's this this sort of manifestation that that, that it's just so important that that people realize that they, they do have a, a direct communication through the consciousness with the, the, with the planet. And they can affect profoundly the, the, the future of the planet and the communication with the planet and the care for the planet by their, their thought and their, their concern for its being. <laughs>